before. I've been saying that investors need to overemphasize quality, uh, that the price differentials between big stocks and small stocks weren't big enough that one should take the risk in small stocks. That's changing now. Uh, I'm seeing better and better and better valuations pop up in the mid caps and in the micro caps. And for investors who can take advantage of it, uh, investors who can take risk, both psychologically and financially, my gut feeling is that in the junior sector, those companies who played chicken with the market, didn't raise money when they needed it because they thought the share price could go up and they could raise money less expensively in the future, are going to be between a rock and a hard place. Uh, My gut feeling is maybe it's wishful thinking because I have cash to deploy, but my my gut feeling is the next 12 to 18 months could be a very good place to play in the private placement markets. But I'm I'm seeing stocks now that I hadn't visited for the last two and a half years because they were hopelessly expensive. Uh, In one particular case, the stock has now fallen from 75 cents to 15 cents. I think it's worth more today selling for 15 cents than it was at 75 cents. Uh, So I certainly see that uh, as an attractive opportunity. I see uh, the GDX generally selling at, at the best multiple to free cash flow it's ever sold at it, today's gold price in my career uh, as being attractive. But increasingly, I'm seeing value in the smaller end of the sector where I didn't see that value a year ago. You know, a year ago on your show, I think the only the, the only stock in in the gold sector that I could really recommend with a straight face was you know, Franco Nevada and Wheaton Precious. These were not exactly aggressive recommendations. Now, uh, there are probably 40 companies on my focus list that I think are viable. There are probably 10 that aren't. So this is pretty attractive. I'm looking at uh, smaller oil companies, which I haven't bothered with because Exxon was so cheap. I'm looking at one in particular now that is selling at less than 55, less than 50%. Uh, of net asset value to enterprise value and is selling, by the way, at one and a half times free cash flow. Uh, this is truly a silly, silly, silly number. So I, I'm seeing lots of opportunity. I see normally lots of opportunity in a market that wants to leg down. There was a reason why these opportunities are apparent. Somebody is going to have to suffer through a bit of volatility to get mm-hmm. from here to the promised land. But the truth is that you buy goods when they're on sale (laughs) and goods are on sale. All right. Uh, So two questions coming out of that. One is, uh, if I heard you right, it's 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 not that you think that the the big majors are going to underperform going forward. You just think there's so much uh, opportunity now on the lower end of the scale that wasn't there before that, that they just have a a much higher potential return at this point in time. Correct. Yeah, I'm a micro cap guy, Adam. Uh, you know, for three years, not being able to be in my sector because it was relatively overpriced was sort of boring. Uh, I was forced into conversations where there were a lot of other people who knew more more about the conversation than I did. I'm delighted now to see the decimation among the juniors because it brings the discussion uh, back into a sector that I'm very good at. It isn't necessarily uh, well, I, you could make the you could make the case with Exxon, given the performance over the last three years, that it's probably fully priced. But what's more important for this discussion is that there are half billion dollar companies uh, that are, uh, by any metric, substantially cheaper than Exxon, um, and you have to begin. You don't have to. But the prudent speculator naturally drifts to absolute value first, but relative value second. The fact that you have absolute value across the sector, but the relative value is better in the small cap place uh, means that I think it's going to be a very good sector, resources generally for small cap investors, for stock pickers for the next five years. This isn't a market where you want to buy the whole market. It never has been. If you buy the length and breadth of the junior market, you absolutely positively, without fail, will lose. You have to have the capability of, seg- uh, of separating the good from the bad from the ugly. But the good now are on sale. 
Right. So build a basket of good, basically. Yeah. You're saying this is the yeah. perfect time to do that. All right. Um, I know that some of these metrics change depending upon the type of business it is, but but what are what are some of the key attributes you look for for determining good value? Now you mentioned free cash flow. I'm assuming that's probably one of them, or at least price to free, free cash flow. But what other kind of metrics do you tend to look closely at? The metrics depend on the uh, the style of the investor and the size of the company. I would look at an oil and gas exploration company very differently than I would look at it, look at Exxon. You know, at Exxon, I would look at margin. I'd look at return on capital employed. I'd look at return on equity. Uh, I'd look at the development pipeline. I would look at uh, net asset value, which is to say the discounted net present value of their free cash flow 10 years out relative to their enterprise value. Smaller companies, uh, you need to be, <laughs> by definition, much less precise. Uh, with very small companies, ironically, despite the fact that they're, review, they're regarded as asset-heavy businesses, they're actually intellectual property businesses. That's what exploration is all about. Mm -hmm. So with a small company, you're looking at people, people, and people. When you get done with those three criterion, uh, then you need to look at the target size. For me personally, uh, knowing that I'm taking huge risk in exploration, I want the possibility of a huge reward which means that if a company is looking for a small project or a medium-sized project, I don't care. Anything that can go wrong with a medium-sized project can go wrong with a big project, but you can never make big money with a medium project. So I'm looking mm -hmm. for target sizes in properties with uh, in situ values uh, of recoverable reserves and resources, likely exceeding $3 billion, I'm looking for a project that likely will be in the best cost quartile worldwide in terms of all in sustaining costs. And I'm looking for a project that's going to deliver a return on capital employed in the best quartile worldwide, which is say 25% plus return on capital employed at the forward commodity uh, strip. So I'm looking for scale uh, and I'm looking for management. And beyond that, I'm looking for a company that has a business plan grounded in reality. Uh, a company where they can tell you what the most appropriate uses of shareholder funds are to increase shareholder value by answering unanswered questions. They can tell you that very specifically. And that can tell you uh, as a consequence of solving those problems, what the next problems to be solved are. It's interesting that if you go to Brian's conference or my conference or, or uh, more generally uh, out, out in the investment world, it, it's embarrassing uh, how many companies don't have an answer to what their business plan involving answering unanswered questions are, how they're going to optimize uh, values. I had a wonderful uh, discussion a couple of days ago, and I'll name the company, Endeavor Mining, uh, a gold mining company, where the CEO was actually lecturing me on the importance of companies thinking on a per share basis, saying it doesn't matter to you as a shareholder what the enterprise does, what matters is how well we do relative to the shares outstanding. In other words, what your show, share of our free cash flow per share right. is, uh, all that kind of stuff. It's wonderful that after some years of penury, the industry is beginning to be rational. <laughs>